Good afternoon, Guyana, and thank you once again for joining us for another edition of Recount Update. Today is day 29 of the process. My name is Hugh Todd, and today we have Attorney at Law and uh, National Candidate, Mr. Sanjeev Datadin. Thank you, Sanjeev, for joining us for this segment of Recount Update. Thank you, Hugh. Good afternoon to you. Good afternoon to our listeners and viewers. Based on the daily average, we should complete the process by Sunday. So we just have a few days remaining. And we've continued to see the APNU AFC um, making wild acquisitions um, against the, the process itself, um, claiming that it was fraudulent. And they've came up with a whole host of um, information that they can't verify. But we know that they are using the state machinery to allow themselves to get some access in GCOM. And we believe that they've been able to influence some of the elements in GCOM itself to influence an outcome in their favor. Um, how do you see their influence currently? Is it waning or do you believe that they still have the same impact they had when the process started? Well, um, the issue is this. APNU, it is now transparent that what APNU is trying to do is to raise as much confusion and chaos as they can so that they will try to tell the Guyana people and GCOM that, look, there was a problem or these vote, this election was not credible. But they have a great difficulty with that. Their substantial difficulty with that is, of course, that the election day went by without a hitch. There is no record, there is not one single report of anything untoward or improper occurring on election day. We all know that what transpired was that the tabulation of Region 4 was hijacked by Mr. Mingo. That's where the problem is. Now, all of these complaints that are being made, the state machinery should never be used and should never be accessible to a political party at election time. Now, I know of no legal authority that is vested in the chairwoman for her to make a request of the information. But I can certainly tell you, there is, it is against the law, it is unlawful for the commissioner of police to respond with people's private data. This is not a police investigation. This is not a court investigation. You can only release person's private data to another agency by an order of court. You see, ordinarily, if there was a police investigation, then the request would not come from the chairwoman of GCOM because no. she is not a policeman. She yes. has no power to investigate. If it was a police investigation, the request would need, need not be made because it is the police force that has the information. So it would amount to checking your own records. Checking your own records in any situation, any public body is entitled to check their own records. Similarly, that is the reason why when Mingo made up his fantasy numbers, GCOM itself was entitled to say we could disregard this because it was their numbers. Mingo is their employee. They can say as a superior officer, listen, Mr. Mingo, you playing fast and loose with the truth. Your numbers just don't add up. So we want to investigate. That's allowed. But the police force similarly would have been in that position. But the police force can't give to any state agency or apparatus or public agency or public body private information of the citizens. How could that ever be so? We passed an Access to Information Act, which dictates what happens when you want public records and how you must obtain it. 
you must write to the Commissioner of Information. You must write to the agency and request it. And if you don't, the Commission of Information is empowered to assist you. And if you're not satisfied, you can go to court and obtain an order, but you must give a reason why you want it. Yeah. And the people whose information you are going to so wantonly distribute, they must be given a hearing. This must be a civilized process. So the commissioner of police has acted beyond the law by providing that information. So, so it should you, never have been done. Yeah, so but it you, is born out of desperation. These are pol politicians, the political operatives of APNU who hold ministerial titles and masquerade now as if they are a government are using their influence to influence public functionaries. And this should not be. So Sanjeev, would you say, given the fact that the, commission, the, commission, the commission of police would have accepted uh, the documentation sent by GCOM, um, their, their processing, and submitted their, their information back to GCOM. Would you say, based on all that you'd have said, would you agree that the police force has been compromised? Absolutely. There is no other explanation. It is either they, are, they have been compromised or they are supremely incompetent. Those are the only two explanations. Why would a commissioner not know that the data that he holds is private information of the individuals? The state allows, is allowed to hold it, but the state is not allowed to distribute it. This is akin to the situation you hear constantly. Where public, where large companies and corporations collect your data and sell it without your, the state is not empowered to do that. Your information was for a specific purpose, so that the state can know when you left the country, when you returned to the country. Unfortunately, from what I have been seeing today and the reports I have, it appears that the state database is inaccurate. And there are persons who are continuously coming forward and saying that I am in Guyana and I haven't left. I haven't traveled in ever. There are people who are saying this. We have another thing, um, Comrade Todd. We have another major issue. Remember all the thousands of numbers, hundreds of numbers for each ballot box that are called out? At the end of the day, Mr. Harmon sent a list of 200 numbers, of which 172 the police responded to say were out of the jurisdiction. He has sent a subsequent list of 264 numbers, I believe, of which, again, uh, the police, the, the chairwoman has to decide whether she will make that request and whether or not the police are going to be poised to reply. But if we total that up, that's 464 names that he's querying. But I thought that it was very clear what the chairwoman said was he who asserts must prove. Yes. How is this a situation of he who asserting is proving? If that is being so, then GCOM appears to be APNU because APNU has said that we would like a clarification. So they must bring the evidence. They should not be utilizing or co-opting GCOM or any state institution. They must have obtained their evidence and come forward with it. So we have scores of persons coming out, um, rebuffing the allegations made by the APNO AFC. Um, they are saying that they were in the jurisdiction on March 2nd, in fact, they did vote. Um, so that is bringing a lot of clarity um, to the people of Guyana, so that if persons are a bit confused based on the allegations made by APNO FC, we now know that they have been just pulling data and putting it together in an ad hoc manner without any evidence. Um, and that basically vindicates the People's Progressive Party Civic and the international organizations, along with nations who have already 
to come out in a in a in, in, a, in a big way stating that the election on March 2nd was free, fair, and credible. The EU ambassador went so far to say that it was virtually impossible to commit fraud on that day. So do you think that with what we're seeing here would influence GCOM? Because as we know, commissioners representing the APNO FC are still bent on having discussions uh, based on fraudulent uh, um, uh, allegations made by GCOM. Would this, by APNO FC, would all of what we're seeing here give good guidance to GCOM when that time comes? Well, the thing is, G ought to understand everybody, and they are a creature of statute. That means that their powers are foreigners of the statute. The constitution that creates GCOM and empowers it, they also have statutes that empower GCOM on how to act. And GCOM must be careful that they do not overstep their bounds because if they continue to overstep their bounds, they will fall foul of the law. Now, we understand that we want to fear and the truth of everything, but it is important that we recognize this is not a situation whereby these concerns, how much ever they are, of APNU are never going to be ventilated. But the place for it to be ventilated is in a court. Yes. And they must bring their evidence. They can't seek to cheat the system and bully the system by saying, you must do it now. And I hope that GCOM recognizes as a body, they must recognize that what they have is a statutory power. And they should discharge their statutory function as they owe and they are obligated to, to the people of Guyana, and they should discharge their duties. Once that is done, we have no difficulties. From the time the count has started, you could listen to the count live on the radio, on Facebook, on various social media platforms. And it is obvious that the PPPC have won the. Now, what is being done is we keep reinventing chaos at every stage. Every day, APNU representatives come up with explanations as to why it is what it is. Every day, those really frivolous claims are put to rest. They are explained. They are, it is shown that what they are saying is frivolous. But they come again the next day. I have noticed and observed that it is getting a little bit less, and it has gotten a little bit less over the past few days. But I am cognizant that we are coming near to the end. And there's the old adage about the cow going to the slaughterhouse. So we might expect a lot more excitement in the coming days or a lot more interest in objections that are frivolous. But they, there is nothing to demonstrate that these elections were anything other than free and fair. And there is nothing to demonstrate that these elections did anything other than elect the PPPC to government. Thank you, uh, Sanjeev. Uh, one other uh, statement I wanted you to address before we, we close, um, and it's the fact that Mingo's fraudulent declarations um, have not yet been acknowledged by the APNO AFC um, nor GCOM. Um, given the fact that we're coming towards the end of the process, uh, would you say that the people of Guyana um, are seeing clearer now that the dust um, would settle on all of the allegations uh, made by the FNFC and they can actually see where the fraud is? Um, you mentioned earlier about the petition. 
that the people of Guyana, the electorate, those who voted, um, and those who are living abroad, do you believe that the people are fully behind the process and they do now understand clearly what this recount process should yield? Sanjeev, I think we're getting some technical difficulties. Sanjeev, can you hear me? So what we can do is play a short clip So we've, I think we're getting some technical difficulties with Sanjeev. He's uh, commuting, and I think he's hit uh, a flat spot there. Um, so we're about to wait for him to rejoin us. Uh, but what we've done so far, we've covered uh, the fact that the APNO FC has captured um, the state apparatus to influence um, an outcome in their favor. We know that that. Uh, will not happen because we still have uh, strength within our institutions, along with good representation um, by the People's Progressive Party, civic and the international community to ensure that there is a transition to democracy. We also believe that the Ghana police force has been compromised. And you heard from Mr. Datadin that the process that was used to do uh, the evaluation undertaken by the Ghana police force was not good in law, and uh, as such, it should not have been undertaken by the Ghana police force. Um, when we look at the credibility of the process and the data that was submitted, uh, we found that it was riddled with inconsistencies, and that uh, places a very dark cloud over the hierarchy of the Ghana police force, because um, we believe that they are in position to ensure that law and order is upheld, and it is not fair to the people of Guyana to have such types of actions coming from one of our leading agencies here in the country. We also looked at the scores of persons who came out um, rebuffing those allegations made by the APNO AFC, and we know now that a lot of the data that they were trying to get uh, verified by GCOM are totally inaccurate. Um, the proof is out there. Persons are coming out, standing up for the democratic right. And it's a good thing for Guyana. So all in all, we believe that the dust has settled. We are approaching um, the closing stages of this recount process. We know that Mingo's fraudulent declarations are still um, to be acknowledged by GCOM and the APNO AFC. The People's Progressive Party Civic, along with the smaller other competing parties, along with our international partners and friends, we know that Mingo's fraudulent declarations led to this process. The people of Guyana stood firm, um, they held their ground, and they are only going to accept a result that is credible and that reflects the will of the people. So I want each and every one of us to continue to support the democratic process, to uphold the values of democracy so that we as a people can move forward because when democracy wins, each and every citizen wins. So thank you for joining us for this segment. We apologize for the technical difficulties because we have lost Mr. Datadin, but we have been able to cover most of what we intended to cover. So thank you very much and continue to follow us on a daily basis. Thank you and good afternoon and good and have a good evening.